everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. If you are new then my name is Mercedes and today I'm going to be sharing with you my experience, my thoughts, my opinions, my feelings and if it was success or fail with my ECV that I had done at the hospital a couple of days ago. Um, so an ECV is essentially a procedure that's taken place using pressure from the outside of your belly to try and move your baby into the head down position ready for birthing through the birthing canal. Now, I have known for a very long time, throughout pretty much my whole pregnancy, that my baby girl has been head up. Um, I went to my 30... no, I... no. I went to a midwife appointment and she said she was breech, which I knew um, because we'd had like a private scan in between, um, a 4D one, so we kind of knew that anyway. Um, I didn't expect anything to have changed. So midwife, because of my diabetes, I get referred to the hospital as well and the hospital decided to give me a couple of extra growth scans because of my gestational diabetes. In the 32, almost 32 week scan I was still breech or she was still breech and in my, it was actually 36 and 5 days which is a little bit later than they usually do your second growth scan which was a little bit annoying to me and I did actually say that at the time like can we bring it forward a bit just in case so we have some options but at my 36 and 5 day a week scan she was still breech I had literally a couple of days to decide if I wanted to take the opportunity to have this procedure or go straight in with an elective it's essentially an elective c-section but I personally don't want to give birth to a breech baby that's just something that I don't feel like is right for me especially as a first time mum and also the possibilities of ending up in an emergency c-section are much greater so I literally had well I was put on the spot a little bit to be quite honest with you because I had to make a decision although um, we did go away and we did make the decision the decision that we came to, or that I came to, because it's obviously my body, is I wanted to give it one last chance to see if we could turn the baby so that I could give birth naturally. Because essentially that is what I wanted to do. I mean, I lost a lot of hope when I got told I couldn't do certain things in the birth because of my gestational diabetes. But I wanted to give it one last chance to see if I could give birth vaginally, naturally, however you want to put it. Um, and... I decided to elect for the procedure to see. I knew I went in, I knew I was going in with a 50-50 chance. So I was booked, I called up after my scan, probably about two hours later because I knew that time was running out. I only had two days to have this procedure really. Um, so I called them up, I said, yeah, we'll, we'll take a chance on the procedure and we'll see what the outcome is the doctor at the time said to me you know if there's any consolation i done a successful one last week which to me then made me think well if it's a 50 50 chance and he'd done one positively last week chances are it's gonna fail i know i shouldn't think like that but that is just my mindset and um given how my pregnancy has gone i didn't have the highest hopes also i know she's very comfortable um in the position that she's in and I was a bit apprehensive about disrupting her. So my appointment was booked for one o'clock. I went in, um, it felt a little bit disorganized. I got told to go to the ward. I went to the ward, they sent me to delivery suite. I got to delivery suite, there wasn't a room ready for us. So it did feel a little bit disorganized and I did lose a little bit of hope thinking that this isn't going too well already. Um, but we were put into a different room to wait, um, we did wait, I'd done my blood, I'd done my urine sample um, and blood pressure and stuff like that, everything came back fine, so then we started to monitor baby girl. Now I thought that was really weird because to me I thought that they would check that she's actually head up still first before they'd done all of my checks 
but I don't think that the midwife that was seeing to us was able to perform that particular task. Um, she did have a little feel of my stomach and she said, yeah, I think this is the head, but that's the same as what my like community midwife said anyway. So, you know, I kind of knew it was probably her head anyway, but just like the uncertainty in their tone didn't really help the situation. But anyway, they persisted to monitor uh, baby girl's heartbeat. They monitored any contractions that I may be having because technically I was full turn. And they were also asking me to track any movements. So I was sat on this bed and to be honest, I hadn't been told to get comfortable, which was like the worst thing I didn't do. Um, I did get comfortable and in the end I had to sort of sh shuffle myself around to get comfortable. And they did monitor her heartbeat for about half an hour. And unfortunately, her heart was very irregular at this point in time. We went from 140 continuously, you know, around 140, 130, 150, um, to a under 100 beats per minute. Um, and then right up to 170 beats per minute. So, as expected, and rightly so, and I wouldn't expect anybody to perform any procedure on me if they wasn't 100% sure, they decided to not go ahead with the procedure at that point in time and to keep monitoring me for further however long it was i think it was about an hour in the end so we carried on being monitored through the heartbeats the contractions the movements for the next hour and we was given the go ahead to have the procedure so we thought lovely brilliant then they moved us again from the room that we were currently in to a different room. Then they had to change the equipment round and it just felt a little bit disorganised, I'm not going to lie. So when it actually came round to the procedure, I was a little bit concerned about the disorganisation. But I still went ahead with it anyway. Um, before we did go ahead, they put me back on the machine because there was about another hour between them agreeing to do it and... The procedure starting so they put me back on the monitoring machine just to check the baby girl's heartbeat was still fine and that they were still happy to proceed again they were still happy to proceed i get the impression that the particular hospital that i went to which is obviously my local hospital doesn't have this procedure come around too often because then i was told that you know oh i'm going to be in the room and this person's going to be in the room these people are going to be in the room and there was about six people in the room watching me have this procedure done which puts me not at ease to be honest because I'm thinking it's not something that's done very often um, people want to see and to be honest I've rocked up to so many of my midwife appointments and had trainee midwives that I haven't been asked if I'm okay to be present in the room. I had the health visitor show up with a trainee and I wasn't asked beforehand if I was happy for them to just turn up at my house. And it, the whole situation has made me feel quite uncomfortable. But anyway, I did vocally say, oh, well, it's nice for you to ask or say for a change, but it makes you feel a bit uncomfortable at times. But I understand people have to learn, blah, blah, blah. So I let them in the room. The procedure was done. Um, and usually what happens is you're given a muscle relaxant, which I did get. Um, I got the muscle relaxant and it made my heart palpitate a little bit, but it wasn't like anything to worry about. Um, I also didn't know at the time if I was allowed to have a drink of water or any food. So I felt quite conscious about going to the toilet because obviously I was strapped up to the uh, machine as well. So then I didn't want to have too much water to make me go to the toilet because I'm already pregnant and I didn't want to feel the edge to go to the toilet whilst they do this procedure. So, um, yeah, it was really hot. We were there for nearly five hours in the end, like with everything that went on. Um, and we were about four hours in before the procedure took place. In fact, it was definitely four hours because my brother finished work at five o'clock and rang me at two minutes past five when I was mid-procedure. <laughs> Because I had my watch on, he was calling me, I could see he was calling me mid-procedure to find out what was going on, considering we went in at one o'clock. But we had no answers at that point, and I was mid-procedure, so I obviously didn't answer the phone. Um, yeah, so usually what happens is they give you the muscle relaxant, 
about 10 minutes later they come and do the procedure which is exactly what happened the muscle relaxant mu like relaxes your womb so then it's easier to maneuver the baby around the womb and um, at any point you can say stop and at any point the doctor can choose to stop for various reasons um, before we began he did use the um, scanning thing to just check that she was definitely head up and she was head up and yeah they tilted the bed back a little bit I do wish that I filmed some footage of this but I have to say like I said from the start it didn't have the highest hopes so sorry about my washing machine it's really distracting my baby girl is on the move in my belly she's all over the shape unfortunately still head up a little spoiler for you so yeah, we started the procedure, he gave me gas and air which I was told I wouldn't have any pain relief so it was nice to be to know that I had that pain relief but also at the same time I didn't want the pain relief but he was like come on take some gas and air sweetheart, <laughs> he was a really nice doctor to be fair um, and I said to Joey, Joey you will know in my face if I've had enough tell him to stop because I felt like I wouldn't be able to tell him um, but I did also say to Joey that I would tell him but at the same time I felt like I don't know I might have been a bit resistant anyway when the procedure started I felt her instantly move halfway round my belly but then I could feel the resistance um, and they usually go once clockwise once anti-clockwise if your placenta is at the back my presenter is a front facing presenter which caused a few more issues as well which really didn't help the situation did it um, and we decided we would try one way first to see if she would go and obviously they have to try and move her bum out of my pelvis in order to get the ball rolling and the baby moving so as I say they got so far and she would move so far and he said she was resisting the move so Although it was an uncomfortable pain, I it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. I must admit, if he'd have said I'll carry on and try again, I would have let him carry on and try again. He did try for a lot longer than he should have, or that than he said he would have, because he said once one way, once the other way. We had little breaks, he held the baby in place while I took a breather, and then we would carry on, um, but unfortunately it was unsuccessful. Um, because my baby girl is very strong, she's very resilient and she did not want to move which is fine. I knew, I kind of knew that going in. In fact when I thought that they wasn't going to even attempt the move, um, I don't know how I feel re felt really because it left open questions to the only option I had left which was a cesarean. But they tried for a long time, Joey said I was very resilient and I said to him as soon as they left the room, to be honest, Joey, it wasn't that bad. So if you are booked in for an ECB and you are wanting to try and give birth naturally, I would 100% recommend you at least try. Don't be nervous. It is a long wait. Um, with my diabetes, that didn't really help because I am supposed to drink and snack between my meals and obviously I didn't because I didn't know what the situation was. The doctor was very apologetic that it didn't work. I I even apologised to everyone watching saying like sorry it didn't work like I don't know why I was apologising because that's me that's now got to go through the c-section um, but yeah I would recommend it I know it's only a 50-50 chance but if that's literally you know guys have an ECB see if you can move this baby to give birth naturally aka vaginally or you go in for a selected c-section I didn't want to just take that option I wanted to make sure that I knew that I at least tried so that's why we went for the ECB I was gutted that it hadn't worked but also at the same time I was kind of relieved that when I left that room I knew what was going on on that day it's been a couple of days now and I am very very anxious about the c-section I'm not gonna lie I do feel like I think about it way too much I worry about it way too much and I'm worried about like the bigger picture like once I've had the c-section 
how my recovery is going to go, how I'm going to feel, how I'm going to look and um, I don't know, I just feel not mentally prepared for it at all. Um, I feel like my mental health has took a hit from that because I really, really wanted to give birth naturally. I wanted that experience, of course. Um, and I know I knew going into it that it wasn't going to be the best birth experience ever anyway because of my gestational diabetes. I knew I would have assistance and help and all the tools that probably would have helped you get the baby out. But I wanted that experience and I wanted to feel my body doing the job that it was intended for. So it has been a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I'm not going to lie to you. But if you are booked in for an ECV, I wouldn't be scared or worried. I would just take it as a pinch of salt. I got told to go in with low um, expectations and I did. But I really wanted to give it a chance and a try. Um, so the next day after the ECV, I must admit, the top of my womb <laughs> slash baby bump, belly, whatever you want to call it, was so tender and so sore. Um, but it literally lasted a day. We're now on day two. And it feels a lot better, I must admit. Um, since the move of them trying to move her, she has been so active. It is unbelievable. She literally wriggles around all the time. And I think, oh my God, is she turning herself? But I know, <laughs> given that I am 37 weeks pregnant, I know there's only a 5% chance that she's going to turn herself. And I cannot see that happening because of how happy and warm and comfortable she clearly is in that spot. And I can feel her head digging right out <laughs> of my ribs at the moment. Why she wants to sit there, I don't know, but she's clearly comfortable. So that, obviously, is my story. I would not rule it out um, if, for instance, Depending on how my birth goes, if this was to happen again, would I go again? I cannot answer that right now because I know the odds. But if this is your first birth and you've come across this video looking for some positive advice about it, I know I wasn't a successful turn, but I would definitely recommend it if you do want to try and give birth vaginally and naturally because I feel like if that's your one chance and you are a low risk birth otherwise I definitely I would recommend going and giving it a try like I say doctor will decide if he wants to stop you can decide if you want him to stop and ultimately most of the time it's the baby that decides if it's not going to work and in my instance it was down to the baby baby girl doesn't want to move it's fine I totally get it and she's made the decision for me but doesn't make that decision any easier but we do have a date for baby girl. You will probably be seeing this after she's born or around the time that she's going to be born. Probably after. Because it will be like a backlog of little bits of videos that I've been saving up for you guys. So yeah. I really wanted to share my experience with it all though. Because I do feel like it's important to talk. And sometimes when you talk to your significant other you don't always get the same reaction that you would if you was talking to other expecting mothers or expected mothers that have been through a similar situation to yourself. So yeah. My next video or my next pregnancy related video is probably going to be talking through some of the um, bumps along the road of my pregnancy. Um, I feel like it's quite important to talk about that as well. I'm not saying I've had the worst pregnancy in the world, of course, by any stretch, I am so blessed, I'm so grateful and I'm so happy to be carrying a healthy baby girl. Despite everything that's happened to me, she's happy and healthy, so, you know, you can't ask for much more than that. But also, you know, there are little hiccups and bumps along the way that do make you feel emotional. And we're only human, we're allowed to be emotional. So, yeah. If you did enjoy this video and you did find it informative or you want any more information that I haven't covered in this video, please leave it in the comments down below and I will get back to you and help you out as much as I can. But just don't be scared. Go in with an open mind. You know, you might be one of the lucky ones that do get a good success and the baby turns and you do have a lovely birth. For me, that wasn't the case, of course, but I, I'm not saying that you won't get that happy ending. Um, or that lovely trial of being able to at least try and give birth naturally. 
Um, but yeah. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.